Before this you start conference lecture, will now be recorded. Before you start your lecture session on uh, uh, lecture session, I would like to introduce you uh, since it is your first lecture and uh, uh, the participants need to know you before uh, they get to learn anything from you. So uh, here it goes. Shobhu Sachi Mukhopadhyay. Sir is the Faculty of Business Analytics and Statistics at the School of Management Science, Makoth, West Bengal, India. He is the University Coast uh, Coordinator of BBA and MBA in Business Analytics at Makoth. He is also the convener of Institutions Innovation Council, IIC, at Makoth. Apart from being Kolkata's lead Facebook developer circle, lead of Facebook Developer Circle. He is the Google Developer Expert in Machine Learning and Intel Software Innovator. He was the former, uh, he was the former Assistant Professor of Business Analytics in Postgraduate Management Studies at BIMS Kolkata, affiliated to Makoth. He was also the Visiting Faculty of Analytics in Postgraduate uh, Management Studies at uh, Symbiosis Center for Information Technology, affiliated to SIU Pune. He received his MS in Physical Sciences from Iser Kolkata, and he is the course curriculum developer, paper setter, examiner, and moderator of Makoth and SCIT Pune. He was the co-founder and chief research officer of Twelet MedTech uh, Private Limited, and he is currently involved in mentoring startups. He was also a project scientist at Nanoscope Technologies for a brief period of time. And then he was featured in Facebook's special uh, coverage, The Limitless, as one of India's leading innovators and entrepreneurs of 2018. He has more than 55 publications, which include patents, books, journals, and proceedings. And his findings on AI, based retinal uh, disease prediction and AI-based early stage cancer uh, detection has been highlighted in all leading newspapers as well as for uh, as well as well as on television journals uh, channels his research success has also been featured in leading national and international tech magazines so sir i won't be taking much of your time now and i will be making you the presenter so that you can lecture us on uh, the topic deep learning in healthcare uh, so yes sir Thank you very much for your generous introduction. So can you just check once that uh, whether you can present the screen or not? Just a second. I think the sharing option has arrived. Yes, sir. I think the screen is visible to all of you. So it is indeed a pleasure to be here in Naiti Dujapur for the faculty development program. I am quite thankful to Professor Pusenji Choudhury and his organi organization team for hosting this wonderful FDP and giving me an opportunity to interact with our esteemed participants. And I am thankful to the uh, host of the program for, the, for his generous introduction. So basically, today's topic will be on the deep learning in healthcare. And already you got my introduction. I am currently a faculty of business analytics and statistics in Macau, and also the part of the several tech communities to enhance the tech culture among India and abroad. So basically, whenever we talk about the deep learning, we all know that how the deep learning got the huge popularity in last, uh, especially after the arrival of the concepts like TPU or GPU. Uh, corresponding to uh, uh, respectively in 2016 and 2012. Basically, NVIDIA came up with GPU in 2012 and, and Google came up with TPU in 2016. Then people realized that the mathematical formulation which have which we are going through for last 30 years since 1980s can be practically deployable because earlier days it was not possible to deploy that amount of the uh, facilitating that amount of the large amount of the data and exploring the deep learning algorithms on them because of that type of the processor power we don't have earlier. 
so we were mostly relying on the machine learning algorithms uh, but gradually we started to explore deep learning in the large extent in the last decade was the completely we can dedicate to deep learning now you see in my talk we i i have designed the talk in several layers for first of all definitely that whenever we go for any innovation or invention we first of all start with philosophy then we go for science then technology followed by product development and finally marketing so basically at the end of the day you know that when in our government and if you see any develop any developing countries that people are mostly emphasizing on the product development such that we can create impact on the bop level or bottom of pyramid level so basically if you see for example in india there are more than 96% people under the bottom of pyramid category and across the globe there are more than 80% people under the bottom of pyramid category that means this percentage of the people do not have enough money to pay tax so can we make our technology uh, a strong enabler of making human life for the uh, for the betterment of the human life so basically we will see that that there there are there are several diseases uh, for example like certain diseases like cancer or even the uh, prone blind blindness causing diseases like the diabetic macular edema or diabetic retinopathy which is which is creating huge problem you know, for for the human human life threatening as a human life threatening diseases so basically can we deploy the deep learning algorithms to pinpoint them in early stages such that it can be easier for the doctors or it can play a strong catalyst role role to cure those diseases in 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 early stages as possible so basically here uh, we shall we shall start for example whenever the disease progresses the main objective of the talk will be like that the whenever the disease progresses there are, we can see there are sub micro level changes happens in our human body okay so through the machine learning or deep learning algorithm can we pinpoint those diseases at early stages so that will be the major concern of our talk i think some problem is going on to whenever i am trying to move the next slide it is creating problem just a second now can you see this uh, screen it is moving now okay fine fine okay so first of all before going to deep learning details we will see some overview on what type of problem should you solve which can create impact in the social life okay so there are several ways of picking up the themes for example digital tech in agriculture i am taking one example here we can consider healthcare healthcare and agriculture in india are two most prominent area where we should focus on whenever we are applying certain technologies okay so here we will just make a brief overview on resource map where we will talk about people organization user beneficiaries breakthroughs then problem canvas followed by solution canvas and finding plots so for example in resource map people and organizations okay user and beneficiaries breakthroughs and risk so in under the people and organization for example if we are talking about the uh, the healthcare sector so who can be the what can be we can we can we can talk about these startups different government government organizations companies who are taking several initiatives to make uh, to make our our environment quite healthy with the technology enabling the several several state of art technologies data sets and information resources in healthcare domain plays a very very important and pivotal role then followed by the partners the partners you can you can you can you can tie up with with several hospitals uh, for getting collecting the data and then deploy your machine learning or deep learning model on them and 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 check check out that whether your algorithms working fine or not then definitely the people venture capitalist are there we know that there are several uh, there are there are several uh, incubation centers are there who are basically nowadays providing several seed funding for the successful prototype development and indian currency it is 25 lakh to 50 lakh and even even if your prototype gets success then for the go to market uh, process you can approach the venture capitalist who in general in indian currency they they invest up to 2 to 5 crore and they take some stakes so there are several ways where you can actually find out a meaningful problem and you can scale up yourself there are several known published challenges there united nations uh, uh, bill get by bill get foundations and obviously from our, in our india dbt and dst were basically publishing there are several possible challenges 
where you can you can solve you can you can you can deploy your practical solutions and get certain grants to make it, make your product in large scale so basically if you see the user and beneficiaries you have to understand that in whenever you are developing products through your deploying the technology who will be the possible users and use cases then influencers by sponsors partners what do you require to do the research and speaking with experts that is very very important now here speaking with experts means you know that you can you can talk with certain mentors who can actually guide you throughout the proper process it can be business mentors it can be technological mentors they take certain stakes for example one person to three person stakes and then you have to also point out that in which area you require to do research because you see if something which is existing in the market there is no novelty in it by reproducing it rather can you uh, can you add some your in, in, in intuitive values on them can you add some innovative contribution on them through doing the research so that is very very important to do the research on those areas that in which area you can ma make your unique contributions and definitely uh, you have to look after the uh, for example if you are developing certain products in the healthcare domain and you have to check that that who will be the who can be the possible partners who could be the possible beneficiaries like for example patients uh, and then you have to make a survey on that who are the possible competitors on on those areas where you do have any market or not at all that thing you have to you have to be very very careful enough and definitely your partners will be the uh, the for example the there are uh, hospitals okay so you can you can tie up with them okay and you can you can uh, can you can facilitate your solutions as a SaaS model as well. Then breakthroughs, for example, like I was telling that financial risk factors are always there whenever you are going for the startup. It may happen that you may end up with the funds before before launching the product for the large scale. So that thing you have to be very very careful enough. There are there are obviously some frictions and regulation biases are there. For example, if we uh, if you are planning up to launch something in very innovative in the innovative in but you are using drones, but you know that in, from the government of India there are several rules regulations are there in the deployment of the drones. So you have to be very very careful enough the rules regulation part as well. Then definitely you have to see that what kind of impact you are creating. Like I was mentioning about the bottom of pyramid. So those factors you have to be very very careful enough. Then definitely the problem canvas. Now we have to deploy that thing in a proper way. That you are using sensors nowadays. We are collecting the real-time data through the sensors. You are using AI, okay, to to uh, to, uh, to classify or prediction, making the predictions. Okay, you can do the crowdsourcing for data collections. And what are the problems you are solving? If we are considering digital tech in agriculture, then greenhouses, crop prediction, farmer finances, weather stations, that can be the possible problem criteria. But if you do the brainstorm, if I map the same problem in the healthcare domain. Then what can be the possible scenarios? Now you see in the healthcare domain, whenever the disease progresses, there are very sub micro level changes happen, and due to that, the biopsy, for example, if somebody is suffering from cancer, the biopsy is not being able to pinpoint that sub micro level changes very accurately. That's the reason the average accuracy level of biopsy is 65 to 70 percent. So can we deploy deep learning there and enhance the accuracy around 95 to 99 percent? Because deep learning is performance wise scalable because of the railway activation function. So you can achieve the accuracy nearby 100% as well. So, can we deploy that there? For example, biopsy takes times to 10 to 12 days to come up with the report, test report. Can we generate the report within a few minutes? So, these are the problem scenarios where you can actually hit up. Okay. And you know the treatment is quite costly. Can we uh, make, it, make it very low cost through the technology? where actually it can create impact on the bottom of pyramid zone so according to that you will design the solution canvas where cost time and impact will be there because we know that if if you are in a if you are launching a startup you are in a lock period of three, three 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 years you can't utilize the full money at a time rather you will get the money six months period of time or one year period of time you have to showcase certain progress and then after the satisfactory progress report you will be able to get the further grant so basically, if we, if I consider the agriculture in uh, digital tech in agriculture domain, you can see following scenarios are there. For example, greenhouses, sensors, greenhouses, AI, greenhouses, crowd studying. These are the possible scenarios. Now, if we map the same thing in the healthcare domain, then what can be the possible scenarios? For example, like I was mentioning, one of the cost of the treatment, can we provide the solution in low cost through SaaS model, software as a service? Then it comes to the accuracy. 
okay can we enhance the accuracy by pinpointing the sub micro level morphological changes through ai algorithms that is another set another segment and obviously uh, can we generate the report within two minutes where bias takes 10 to 12 times so those are the scenarios now once your picture is clear like i'm saying that while you are making an impactful problem solution solution for the impactful problem you have to, your philosophy you have to be very very clear enough so that is the finding plot scenario that time and cost is given to you technology is there use them and and make an impact on the human life because our target should be to make science and technology as the as the benefit for the beneficial purpose of our human life that should be blessings to us not the cards so basically that's the reason whoever whatever may be our profession because you see whenever any problem occurs in the society we have certain tendencies like chalta hai chalta rahega but there are very few numbers of the solvers so it is the it is it is the most important time where we should try our level best to become a solver whatever may be our profession we can be engineers we can be scientists we can be professors whatever may be our profession but we should try our level best so now after once we get the clear view of the philosophy okay now we will we will see that the science part but before going to that i just want to highlight two points in the helmer questions whatever we have discussed so far Helm, that is highlighted in this nine questions by helmer you have he's one of the most prominent inventor of this of the 20th century like people worship einstein in science domain he is being worshiped in technology domain he is holding the most number of the patents across the globe and if you see the nine questions he has highlighted which is very very important and one of his uh, uh, <clears throat> one of his inventions nowadays is, is a daily part of our life that is lcd liquid crystal display so basically the nine pertinent question he has highlighted whenever you are heading towards a meaningful project that is what are you trying to do articulate objectives without jargon so once you have understood certain things you never will use the jargon second one is how it is it done today what are the limits of current practice that is very very important because you it from that you can understand why you required to do the research then what's new in your approach and why do you think it will be successful who cares if you are successful what difference will it make then what are the risk and payoffs how much will it cost how long will it take and what are the midterm and final exam to make this to check the success to check the product success for example if you are do, deploying if you are launching certain uh, app app based solution so you know that we have the alpha 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 testing phase beta testing phase in alpha testing phase internal team will evaluate it and if it is in the healthcare domain then the, at the end of the day doctors are the key decision makers your technological solution just a playing a lower or catalyst as it and and obviously then then the beta testing phase will be there where the some external people can uh, check out your performances so basically these are the ways how you can you have you can evaluate that whether you are heading towards the right path or not so this is the lean canvas in overall okay so problem solution key matrices cost structure revenue stream unit value proposition that thing we will discuss during the marketing segment uh, unfair advantage channel and what all the customer segment this is the overall thing whatever we have discussed so far so that was the philosophy part now in the second phase we'll move towards the science so let's dive in so basically you see in the healthcare domain we capture data through in prominently two ways either through imaging or through spectroscopy so with spectroscopy from our basic knowledge of engineering physics we know that the light scattering from the biological tissues because whenever you shine light if it is the infected lesion for example if somebody suffering from oral cancer or skin cancer so what happens that it protein lipid part of the body absorbs the certain portion of the light and certain portion back scattered or reflected back that we call as the uh, that 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 from that that portion if we capture that portion through the spectrometer you will be able to have some in, uh, intensity versus wavelength information where actually the morphological changes at sub micron level, level morphological changes information is encoded there okay so basically in physics uh, from the uh, people from the engineering background or physics background they are mostly interested to make study on the elastic scattering spectroscopy okay where the morphological changes sub micron level changes encoded there but people from the bio, bio, uh, biology background or biochemistry background they are mostly relying on the inelastic scattering spectroscopy where basically fluorescence spectroscopy raman spectroscopy are there where people study the biochemical changes but people like us who are from the engineering or physics background we are mostly studying the morphological changes through different ai algorithms we can 
deploy machine learning or deep learning, we can see that if we can pinpoint the diseases in early stages. So basically, in our in our earlier development, where we got the uh, we, we, which we take the basic references that the uh, multi presence of multifactality in biological tissues. Where we found that we know that the biological tissues are self similar in nature, what we call fractal. So in 2006, there was one very successful paper, PRL paper. Actually, they have highlighted that we can uh, make certain approaches through MFD, for multifactor dependent fluctuation analysis. Rather than we have, we, what we have done, then we have picked up that particular theme and we ourselves developed an algorithm by by making the MFDF as a feature extractor tool along with clubbing them with several machine learning algorithms and we have tested the system efficacy. So then it was when we had the very small number of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the samples for the analysis purpose. That was the basic background of our starting of our research. But then you know that we require data in order of 10 to the power almost 10 to the power 4 to 5 to deploy deep learning. So we started to enhance the samples through by collecting data and also apply the chance to transfer learning and then we have gradually deployed deep learning there but that was the basic starting of our research where we actually used the mfdf as the feature extractor tool followed by clubbing them with several machine learning algorithms then gradually like i tell like i like i mentioned that we started to explore deep learning that we will discuss very soon so basically, uh, before going to that part, I just want to give a given brief overview. If you see the screen, that that basically we have unfolded the data from 2D images to 1D. Why we have unfolded it there? That same concept is also used in the final layer of the deep learning uh, CNN. We call it flattening. But this was this method was existing earlier also in the field of nonlinear dynamics. We call it unfolding. The main motto was there in the initial level that if, for example, if you were analyzing two by two image, I mean, uh, sorry, n by n image, then you if you see the order of complexity will be it, it will be in the nested for loop. If we if we run, write the code, it will be in the nested for loop. So the order of complexity goes to order of n square. Now, if you can unfold them in one direction, either in horizontal direction or vertical direction, so in the terms of linear algebra, we call it vectorization. So if you do the vectorization, what happens that your order of complexity will reduced will be reduced. So from order of n square it will become order of n. So your order of complexity is reducing from order of n square to order of n. So that is the main funder, that it's not only about to get the higher accuracy, but can we reduce the order of time, time complexity? That is that is also very, very another one important factor. And along with that, another important thing what we are doing, that is doing the Fourier preprocessing. Why it is important to do the Fourier preprocessing? Because you see, from our basic engineering knowledge, if we are from the EC background, electrical engineering background, or even CSC background, we all know that in, in the convolution theorem, we are all aware of the convolution theorem. Now you see, whenever you are dealing with the in vivo data, in general, what happens whenever you are making experiment with the in vitro samples in your lab, that is a dark room experiment, and uh, there is a very rare chance of interfering the stray light with the original signal for contaminating it. But if you are doing it in a, with the in vivo data, when you are you are you are collecting in vivo data, it is very difficult to get higher accuracy with in vivo data because you see original signal is contaminated with the noise, unwanted signal. So that's the reason the signal gets highly contaminated. So what happens that we all know that in the time time in the in the spatial domain, signal is in convoluted format with the noise. But if you do the Fourier preprocessing, if you go to the frequency domain, then what will happen? The signal and noise will be in the multiplicative format. Okay. So it becomes quite easier for you to remove the noise and then you can you can deploy your whatever the algorithm you want to apply there so in the pre-processing step the data cleaning okay those things are very very important so pre-processing uh, is very very important step whenever you are applying certain algorithms to get the desired accuracy because you may you may use certain elegant algorithm but if the pre-processing step is not correct then you are you're not supposed to get the proper accuracy so that is that is another scenario so these two are the main things i want to highlight but as you know that that in case whenever you are using machine learning to algorithms you can go with some elegant feature extraction tool like i mentioned we have used earlier mfdf but then once we get the data in order of 10 to the power 5 we started to explore with the deep learning and in the deep learning you know uh, if you apply, apply cnn and all those things uh, it, it is the intermediate part where you, you the automatically the feature extraction will happen. You don't have to apply feature extraction tools externally. 
or rather it is quite an intrinsic part of the deep learning. So this is the details of the sample preparation. And this is the basically the experimental setup. Just I want to go back uh, this particular area. Uh, just a second. Okay. So basically here you can see that whenever you are using the light source, let me tell you that we are using the white light spectroscopy for collecting the data. So that is received to human body. So that means we are using 400 to 700 nanometer range. Okay. And if you see the light is being the tissue sample where the basically the light light is light is hitting the tissue sample and then you can see there is a some portion of the light is being absorbed by the sample and like the protein lipid part of our human body and if some abnormality is there that can be pinpointed by capturing with that information with this spectrometer okay so that backscattered light will be captured with this spectrometer so that that particular light that particular information you can capture through the wavelength versus intensity so if any sub micro level changes happen you can you can extract it through by analyze that particular data so now we will see that uh, that was the background that how we, we we have we have made the experimental setup how we have captured the uh, in vitro samples and how we are planning now we are uh, how we are we, we have earlier used the deep plan <coughs> sorry the machine learning there now we will see that the deep learning phase after after as i said that whenever you have the data in order of 10 to the power 5 you can you can ap apply ample opportunity to apply deep learning so basically if you see the basic funda that our target is to bring bring down the make the product through the mobile based solution okay through the mobile app you will capture in vivo sample and then you will deploy certain deep learning algorithm and you can get the proper accuracy now you see that we all know for example that the the like i was mentioning that people never thought of deploying deep learning even before uh, before 2012 so when nvidia came up with gpu and then google came up with tpu in 2016 so gradually people started to explore in this field and we got a lot of iconic framework like tensorflow uh, uh, pytorch so those are the pythonic frameworks you can apply uh, you can utilize for uh, getting the uh, uh, for utilizing the deep learning algorithms now you see like i was mentioning that if you want to build the mobile based solutions your mobile don't have that much of the processor power now you may say that why don't you use the cloud based platform okay so you know that that the whole analytics is being cloud is storing the data the whole analytics you may be performed in the cloud and you can get the result in your smartphone that the thing we actually have done during whenever we initially developed the machine learning algorithm in clubbing them with the MFDFA. And that was the way our app used to perform like that. But then what happened that you know that due to whenever you have the huge databases and you are constantly monitoring, real time monitoring the human body, what will happen that there will be congestion in the cloud because of the humongous, humongous transactions with the cloud. So that's the reason you all know we have the another options, people from the CSIT background any other technology background we are nowadays known that we can utilize the low processor resources of the smart devices like mobile by utilizing the edge computing facilities now you see to utilize the edge computing facilities where basically the simple computations you can do there complex computations can be done in the cloud so you can reduce the load from the cloud in certain level but in that case conventional cnn will not going to give you the optimum result. In that case, we have to use some trick along with the conventional CN. So basically that particular trick is our main objective that how we have utilized it to make it for the mobile vision application purpose. Okay, that type of trick we have utilized there that we are using the uh, certain edge computing tricks along with the custom uh, mobile version of CNN, you may say, and we are not compromising the accuracy level or quality but we are we are we are making a trick playing a trick by reducing the time complexity such so that we can do certain sort of the uh, applications in your through the mobile based approach okay so what are the tricks we have used that is the main focus here so basically we know that if we have the image input data set of size uh, df by df and M is your basically the number of the channels so if it is an rgb image we know there are three channels basically red green and blue 
so if we have the number of the filters at the kernels of, of, of the size for example dk by dk by a so if the normal convolution operation is done then the output will be of size for example dp by dp by n okay so basically what happens that we are separately executing the operations for channel wise okay so basically you all know this there is a cats and dogs detection basically image detection problem is a very very trivial problem after the handy detection that whenever people start with exploring in any they basically solve this type of the problems and they get their hand dirty and they get boost it, it is quite uh, uh, confidence booster for the beginners who are basically starting learning those algorithms so basically we know from our basic funda that there are several layers like for example convolutional layer max pooling layer flattening and followed by the fully connected layer now the, you can see this flattening where we basically unfold the data into one direction so basically what happens that this the, like i mentioned that the concept of the flattening is not a new it was the earlier concept uh, of the data unfolding which we call the vaporization in terms of the linear algebra which basically used to reduce the complexity of the data the same same thing is being done in the even in case of the max pooling max pooling is also basically reduces that reduces the complexity okay because the because we know the high level features are being extracted by the convolution layer okay so then through the max pooling layer we basically reduce the time complexity okay then followed by the flattening layer and fully connected layer we basically make the image detection finally okay so now that was the conventional funda all of you know that was the standard CNN funda. But uh, so this this was the overall scenario what we have discussed earlier already. So basically, if I see, like I was mentioning, that it was not only about to to capture the higher accuracy, but also to check out the time complexity. So for checking the time complexity, if you see the number of the dot products or multiplications happening here. So like I, I was mentioning that the number of multiplications in one convolution operation for the size of filter dk by dk by m now if you see since there are n number of filters and if you see that each filter slides vertical if you consider it and horizontally for the dp times the number of the multiplications will become n cross dp cross dp okay so convolution uh, multiplications per convolution so for a, any standard con cnn okay we have the total number of the multiplications will be n by dp square dk square cross m okay because there are m number of the channels so n cross dp square dk square cross m that was the number of the multiplication in case of standard cnn okay so for example now if you go for the depth wise separable cnn then what will be the scenario because like i was mentioning that we want to utilize the funda of the edge computing okay through the by enabling the ds cnn depth wise separable cnn okay where we can utilize the trick of the of the low time complexity okay such that we can we can deploy them for the mobile versions so basically there are many types of the cnns are available so one class of the cnns are the depth wise separable cnn so they have the very lesser number of the parameters to adjust in compared to the standard cnn so what will happen which will reduce the chances of the overfitting okay or high variances or then obviously this these are the computationally very cheaper because there are very fewer computations are there and very effective for the mobile version applications okay so for example some of these types of the sentence are already has been launched by google also that mobile net exception net those are the available pretend models are there so basically there are uh, two types of the depth wise separable convolutions one is the depth wise convolutions and otherwise the point wise convolutions so now we'll check one by one okay that how we can utilize it so first of all if we go by the the depth wise operations so basically if we know that convolution is applied to a single channel at a time unlike the standard cnn it is done for the all m channels so if it is applied on the single channel so what will happen then the here the size of the filter or kernel will become dk by d, dk by one okay now if there are n number of the channels are there then what will happen the m such filters are required so output will become dp cross dp cross m okay so this is the overall scenario what i have mentioned earlier okay so now what will be the cost of the operations so if you see the cost of the operations so basically 
what will happen is a single convolution operation will requ require decay cross decay multiplications so since the filters are slided by dp cross dp time so what will happen for the m number of the channels the total number of the multiplication will be equal to m cross dp cross dp cross dk cross dk so overall depth wise convolution operation the total number of the multiplication will become m cross dk square cross dp square so that is the scenario for the depth wise seven okay because we know that under the depth wise separable seven we have two operations one is a depth wise seven and another point wise seven so now if you see the point wise seven scenario okay so what will happen that in the point to is operation basically a one cross one operation will be applied on the what the m channels m number of the channels are there we have talked earlier so basically so for the filter size of this operation because this is the point wise seen it so will be one cross one cross m okay so if we use the m number of the filters there so the output size will be what will be dp cross dp cross m so that will be the output size so now you see this is the overall scenario of the pointwise convolution from the pictorial representation you can understand the overall scenario now if i check the cost of the operation in overall cost of the operation so basically a single convolution operation require one cross m multiplications we can see that so since the filter is being slided with dp cross dp times so what will happen the number of the multiplication will become equal to m cross dp cross dp cross number of the filters so for pointwise operations, we can easily observe that the total number of multiplications will become m cross dp, dp square cross n. So that is the overall multiplication cost in pointwise convolution. Now, if we see the overall scenario that if we go back to depth-wise separable CNN, because we know that comprises of two, take, two, two approaches. One is the depth-wise CNN and one is the pointwise CNN. So if we go by that, so therefore the for overall operation what will happen then then you can see that total multiplications will be depth wise convolution multiplication plus point wise convolution multiplications so total multiplication what will happen or if you look at the overall scenario that m cross dk square cross dp square plus m cross dp square cross n so in overall scenario what will happen that m cross dp square will, will be will, can you, you can take as a common within the bracket dk square plus n so for depth wise separation separable CNN operation you can see that total number of the multiplication lies m cross dp square this is under the common and if you see within the bracket dk square plus n. okay so that is the overall scenario now if we compare it if we compare it with the standard CNN so what where does the complexity lies that we have to check check take care of so for the standard case you can see that n into dp square into dg square into capital m whereas the depth wise separable set and you can see m cross dp square cross dk square plus n okay so basically if we do for example to check the ratio we can, what we can do is a very simple way we all know that for example complexity of the depth wise separable set and okay, divided by the complexity of the standards okay so as simple as that now upon solving what we are finding the ratio r will be equal to 1 by capital n plus 1 by dk square right now you see if we consider that capital n equals to 100 and dk equals to 512 then what will be the ratio the ratio value will be capital r equals to 0 0.01 triple zero four. so that is the ratio so what does it imply it actually implies that this means the depth wise separable neural convolutional network in example performs 100 times lesser multiplication as compared to the standard convolutional neural network right so what does it imply this implies that we can deploy faster convolutional neural network models without losing much of the accuracy it may happen that depth wise separable student because this is a lightweight lightweight scene we call it lightweight model because because we are want to deploy it over the smartphone based applications we want to do the edge computing so these are the lightweight approach so due to that lightweight approach so it may sometimes happen that you may not get as much as good accuracy like the standard scene it may happen the standard scene is giving you 96 percent accuracy 
you are getting with that lightweight model 92% accuracy. But you, you should understand that getting 92% accuracy is acceptable if you can reduce the time complexity. So that type of things are happening here. Because you see, whenever you are developing product with the large amount of the samples, so you, if, if you are planning to launch, it, because you see, healthcare is a very sensitive sector. Okay. So if you are one to planning to do the real time, okay, there will not be any kind of a latency. So there should not be any congestion in the cloud. If there is a congestion in the cloud, there will be latency. So you will not be able to get the real time output. Rather, your outcome will be near real time. So get the to get the real time outcome, you have to use that type of the trick. So these are these are the one of those such tricks, the switch you can use to reduce the time complexity and get the facility of the lightweight models through the edge computing best approach. Okay, so there's, these are the very these are the uh, quite beauty of the stepper model. So this is one of the sample example I am using basically for the ROC model to true positive rate, false positive rate. So there are a couple of machine learning algorithm has also been compared. For example, SBM or KNN, which I mentioned earlier, because uh, uh, that was clubbed with the MFDFA for the feature extraction purpose. And then, then we have seen the, their performances, followed by deploying CNN and DSCNN. DSCNN stands for the Deploy Separable CNN. Okay. So that is the overall scenario. If you look at, look, look at the screen, so there are several algorithms, and SB, SBM, KNN, CNN, DSCNN are there. So if you see the F1 score, we know that the uh, basically the formula of the F1 score is basically true positive divided by true positive plus half of false positive plus false negative. We know precision. Precision means what? True positive divided by true positive plus false positive. Sensitivity means true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. Specificity implies false negative divided by, uh, sorry, true negative divided by true negative plus false positive. This is the overall scenario. Now, if you see the accuracy level, SVM, KNN, CNN, DSCN, now one by one, if you see, for example, F1 score, what we are getting for SVM 0.87, KNN 0.69, CNN 0.97, DSCN 0.9, the same thing we are getting for the CNN and DSCN. Precision, if we look after that, 0.89, 0 0.71, 0 0.96, 0 0.96. If we look after the sensitivity, 0 0.86 for SVM, 0.692 for KNN, uh, 0 0.963 for CNN, 0 0.98 for DSCN. If we look after the specificity, for example, 0 0.855 for SVM, 0 0.692 for KNN, 0 0.963 for CNN, 0 0.975 for DSCN. Okay, so this is the world scenario. Now, for example, if we take the execution of the algorithm and their time through the mobile app, the app we are developing, developed. So basically, we have we have computed the time. So basically, for SVM, we got 7.28 second, KNN 5.26 second, because they are they, they are quite a lucid algorithm. And now you see CNN is taking 1.1 minute, and for DSCNN 12 second. So if we look back to the earlier slide. Overall, if you see the overall accuracy scenarios and overall the time scenarios, you can say that DSCNN is the best choice to go for rather than CNN. And regarding the accuracy, so although they are SDM, KNN, they are taking the lesser time, but if you see the accuracy aspect, we should go with DSCNN. Okay. So now that was the cancer part, what we have covered up. So this was the uh, OCT, OCT images, which we captured actually by collaborating the LB Prasad I Institute. So basically, the different retinal layer informations are give, were given there. So here, let me tell you that there are different retinal layer informations were mentioned, like OPL layer, NFL layer. NFL layer stands for nerve fiber layer, for example, GCL for ganglion cell layer, etc. So basically, what we have done, we have uh, we have taken the steps. First of all, as I mentioned, before going to deep learning, our first approach was to club the MFDFA with the machine learning algorithms where MFDFA will do the feature extraction. So here, yeah, basically we have tried out with the MFDFA for the feature extraction purpose. Same funder, what we have used for the uh, cancerous cells. Here also, this is a major cause of the blindness, diabetic macular edema. So what happens there, whenever the disease progresses, there will be the broken collagen fiber and due to the broken collagen fiber, but there will be very sub level morphological changes will happen. So what will happen? It will increase the tissue surface heterogeneity and it will reduce the correlation among the tissues. Same thing like the cancerous cells we have seen. So by applying the MFDFA, there are two parameters we have uh, 
we are taking care of one is the RCS point, which is a measurement of the correlation. Another one is the singularity spectrum width, which is the measurement of the tissue surface heterogeneity. So if you see the healthy OPL, OPL is one particular layer, you can see that the, the, the RCS exponent 0.61 in case of DME affected OPL layer, that means diabetic macular edema affected OPL layer, you can see the value is 0.52. So that means you can see the correlation level has decreased because our exponent H is the measure of the correlation. Whereas for the tissue surface heterogeneity, you can see there is the increment of the tissue surface heterogeneity. Okay, for compared to healthy OPL, DME affected OPL, the tissue surface heterogeneity increases. So that means the, you, whenever you are applying certain algorithm, certain phenomena, you have to understand that whether that particular algorithm can justify the analysis, what is happening physically. So you can see this type of algorithm has that type of the capacity. Okay, so here basically we have the very lesser number of the samples. So if you look at the next next particular slide, we do not even uh, require to apply machine learning. It can actually classify by itself. Okay, we have not applied any machine learning algorithm because MFDFA who have extremely prominent features in terms of the Haas exponent and the singularity spectrum width, they are itself classifying it. If I see the mean and standard deviation value, they are not overlapping with each other. AMD means age-affected macular degeneration. But after that, when we capture the large amount of the samples, in a similar way, the way I have shown you, you guys that how to utilize the benefit of the depth-wise separable CNN, which is a very lightweight CNN model, we have applied same thing here also for the mobile app development purpose. And these are the few uh, publications, whatever we have discussed so far. Okay. And now you see what are the impact we are creating. So we have covered up the science technology part. Now we are going towards the product, production and marketing part. So first of all, we have covered the philosophy that what problem we should solve, what type of impact we are creating. After pinpointing that, we have covered up the science technology part where we have seen the efficacy of the several nonlinear dynamics models like MFDFA. Then I told you the efficacy of the machine learning and how the machine learning algorithm models are being outperformed by the deep learning model. And we have, I have given you the, uh, the hints of how you can utilize the lightweight deep learning model for the mobile app development purpose or that type of applications. Now you see the product development and marketing part, that what type of the impact you are creating. So if we only consider the cancer uh, approach, our approach on the cancer cells, so definitely the pain-free early stage cancer diagnostic and low cost portable device. Generating report, the second solution is a generating report within a few minutes where biopsy examination takes several weeks of time. And obviously the third solution is the automatic solution and highly efficient. So basically this is the app. This is the basically the front view of the app, okay? And what are the unique solutions you are basically doing? The replacing painful cost-effective biopsy 100 times cheaper than biopsy and accuracy greater than 95 percent where you know the biopsy accuracy of around uh, 65 to 70 percent on an average portable lightweight and 80 times faster than biopsy so business model that is very very important that how you are going to leverage it so basically if you, if you can charge the SaaS model if you software as a service if you utilize it software as a service if you charge 100 rupees per scan or 10 rupees per scan, till it is thousands times cheaper than the biopsy, you can sell that device once at a time. Okay. And obviously, the growth strategies is very, very important because you know these are all the data driven approach. So you require to constantly tie up with hospitals. Okay. You have to con consult with doctors. Okay. So ongoing clinical trials in hospitals are very, very important, very, very essential. You can do the revenue model collaboration with the 52 revenue sharing. Those kind of tricks you can do actually. And if you see the, you have to do the competitive landscape as well, the type of innovations you are providing, that how it is superior in terms of your, uh, the competitors. So these are the very, very important thing because you see nowadays, uh, even in colleges, universities, they have their own, own e-sales, entrepreneurship sales are there. There are several IIC innovatives, innov institution, innovation council, innovative uh, initiatives are going on there. So if any students or faculties, they are preparing their slides, they can use this type of the uh, structure by showing the competitive benefit from their product with the existing product. For example, you can use utilize the features like low cost because we are providing the solutions in the low cost affordable healthcare domain through the deep learning techniques. So you can talk about accuracy. You can talk about smart devices. You can talk about data-driven approach, cloud-driven approach. You can add another features that is 
basically each computing lightweight this model approach you are using so basically the talk i have i, I have given here there is a this is the technical talk but the lucid way of that talk is also available in the youtube if you see that there i basically highlighted the lightweight model performances for the uh, your uh, medical tricorder preparation because what our target is to using a single device can we provide the multiple solution multiple disease solution this is diagnostic solutions by using this type of the low processor devices or facilitating edge computing so can we provide certain solution analogous to medical tricorder and what are our progresses so there i have given the app demonstration also that was my tedx talk which is available in the youtube you can check out there okay so the product demonstration along with the multiple diagnostic solutions was given there that how we are deploying deep learning solutions especially the lightweight deep learning models for the mobile ad development purpose and how we are giving the solutions for the multiple disease uh, multiple diseases okay so that was the media appreciation so far war basically for the uh, deploying the new techniques in case of the retinal disease detection purpose so in the televisions like g news Urisha tv news world india they have highly appreciated our works okay and also, also the global news site like yahoo news nature india okay also our uh, media reports has been published uh, in case of the, the, the hindu business standard the indian express the economic times because we are the first group across the globe who actually explore the unique techniques for the early for the early diagnosis purpose of the eye diseases then obviously the, our cancer research success was also highlighted by the, the hindu business standard indian express at its india magazine then we also for example in in the in case of the india's leading uh, exams for example upsc ias exam syllabus they have included our cancer research uh, approach so we are also the first runner up of the throughout this approach we are the first runner up of the hackathon organized by the mit and nasa and that was our research was also highly appreciated by the uh, embassy of india to switzerland they have made the honorary mention in their website so basically these are my social media handles you can you can connect with me anytime whenever you require so that was the all overall discussions related to the how we can we can uh, facilitate our deep learning based approach in case of the healthcare domain and we can create impact on the billions of lives so basically just my my request to all of you because you see that we should take care that science and technology should make should be benefited for the human life and if we can make the betterment of human life then what can be uh, superior than that right so before end of, I end up my talk, I have a, I have a very, uh, very funny question that is not related to any science and technology. That is just for fun after a serious talk. That if anybody from the audience, uh, if you wish to answer it, kindly uh, answer. So basically, what is the difference between a film director and a computer vision scientist? That is just for fun. There is no uh, science or technology behind that. What is the difference between a film director and a computer vision scientist? Can anybody want to uh, take an attempt from the audiences? Okay, so let me tell it. So basically, what does film uh, what does uh, film director say? Light, camera, action. Okay. And a computer vision scientist say, light, camera, pixel. So that is, a, that is the funny difference. OK. So these are my social media handle. If you want to wish or collaborate for any research, you can, you can contact me. And if you have any question, kindly ask me. Or any precious feedback, that will be highly appreciated. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. So, first of all, sir, thank you for this lecture, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I was actually looking forward for this lecture because uh, the whole aim of mine is to contribute something in the healthcare section. Another question, yes, sir. sir, that, sir, healthcare section is the areas of healthcare, the most of the areas of healthcare are still untouched and untapped, right? Now, what the doctors do they do at a very uh, uh, context level say i can say like at the in-person level 
now what we are trying to do is, is a, at a very broad level right we are trying to uh, resolve the issues from the root cause right sir how much feasible would it be uh, or uh, i mean i mean to say to resolve issue how much satisfaction one gets after resolving a certain problem in the healthcare section because that is what we are all looking for when we are trying to uh, resolve any or uh, curb any illness or related to that well so let me tell you first thing that you see the doctors have done their mbbs they have done their medical studies for 5 6 years so nobody knows better than them okay related to human body so basically doctors are there they will be there forever okay what we can do as a technologist as a data scientist whatever maybe maybe you can you can refer our task is to facilitate technology to help them in an optimum way so whatever the technology we are providing that is a catalyst okay we are not the decision maker in the healthcare domain doctors are the decision makers whatever the little bit contribution we can make that will be for the that will act as a catalyst okay so when if for example if you are developing certain apps okay that will also be approved by the uh, your your uh, the body found by the doctors whether it is in alpha testing phase or beta testing phase okay now you see like the few things i was mentioning why do why do you require that type of ai based approach or deep learning based approach because you see like i was mentioning that for example bias it is quite costly and you know it yeah, it will take 10 to 12 this time and the accuracy level is 65 to 70 percent but why because you see it is <clears throat> it can't pinpoint the sub micro level changes okay so in those areas our ai based applications can create miracles because if you are doing the morphological study that type of sub micro level changes can be pinpointed using those algorithms so in this way in this means you are giving the uh, the support okay i think one question has arrived just to let me have a look sir what about the privacy of the data because it should be taken care because okay so basically you see what happened what is the ideal way from my personal experience what i let me tell you that the privacy should be given optimum priority there is no doubt okay and whatever the data is given to you for analysis purpose or if somebody is tying up with the hospitals okay so the identity of the patient should not be revealed and before because there is a sensitive issue first of all and before whenever you are going to tie up with hospital you have to sign the irb protocols within the irb protocols there are certain protocol amount of the rules you have to maintain while collecting of the data so first of all like i was mentioning that in our approach we have used the white light spectroscopy 400 to 700 nanometer that is completely non-invasive to human body so one thing you have to take in care of that that whatever the instrument and technology you are using that should be non-invasive okay human tissue should not be affected by that second one is the proper cons consent that if patient is agree then you take the sample otherwise not and obviously you have to respect their privacy you can't reveal their identity they are giving you for the why they are giving you the that type of samples because you can make the benefit for the human life that's it okay so you should appreciate their efforts but you should not reveal their identity or whatever the other privacy related protocols will be there you have to maintain that okay so that's the reason you can you can get that type of the collaborations with the hospitals but before making any authentic collaborations you have to abide by those rules you have to promise that you will abide by those rules then you will get the chance of making certain clinical trials okay so obviously very good question always remember that privacy any cases it's not only in healthcare domain in any sector the privacy should be given utmost priority it should be um, and in, in especially in healthcare it is a very sensitive thing we, sh we should have to respect everybody's privacy okay any more question Anybody from the audiences? Any question? Does anybody have any more questions or so? I hope I, I am able to make your proper answer of your question, right?
I I hope that I have made you made a made a proper explanation of your question, right? You have had a very very pertinent yes, question actually. Okay, thank you, thank you. For any if you if you if you wish to collaborate or if you have any further question, you can actually contact me as well. Prasenjit sir has my number. You can take my number. You can, you can make make a query on that. I guess one question has arrived in chat box. To everyone, yes. Sir, uh, so I would like to say that uh, this was a f uh, this was the first one of the very first lectures which we had, uh, which was actually domain space uh, specific. Uh, before this, we were having lectures like uh, like NLP and computer vision and decision trees and all, but which was uh, more of classical machine or classical uh, deep learning uh, based. So uh, after uh, your lecture session, we could actually uh, apply uh, our uh, deep learning or machine learning knowledge uh, onto some uh, use cases which you have mentioned, and uh, we could uh, maybe prove useful to the humankind, uh, which is. Uh, <laughs> As I always say, you see that I strongly believe that everybody have their own own intuitiveness, okay, own creativity. Everybody is very special in this world, okay. So what we have to do, we have to make be confident on ourselves, okay, and be honest to ourselves, and we should try our level best to whatever the little knowledge we have for the beneficial purpose of our society. Then you can see that our society will become much more elegant than the earlier one. That's it. And I know everybody in this world have their own capabilities, have faith on all your, your capabilities. All of you can excel in your career. That's it. And let, let me write down my email ID also. If anybody wants to contact with me, you can you can you can feel free to write an email to me. Okay. I am just writing it in a comment box. Kindly have a look at it. Uh, so, sir, uh, I would like to ask one question on behalf of all the participants. Sure, 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 sure. sure. Sir, uh, since uh, machine learning and deep learning models and the concept of uh, this is not restricted to computer science itself, and we can apply uh, this knowledge to wherever we want, like metallurgy if we want, or uh, if we want, or like in healthcare. Sir, uh, I would like to ask how much of the domain knowledge would, uh, would it actually require? Because for people, uh, for generally for engineers, uh, at least for me, sir, I am not very uh, specialized in the bio uh, biology part or uh, the healthcare part, but uh, can I uh, apply my domain knowledge like machine learning or deep learning even if I have less of the domain knowledge? So, well, look, there are several ways actually. Uh, first of all, definitely uh, regarding the domain knowledge, if you are, if it is not possible for everyone to apply on on every every sector of your computational knowledge because of the lack of the domain knowledge because you see if you don't have the domain knowledge what will happen in certain cases you are unable to interact with the data in a proper manner you may analyze it but you don't know that whether you are heading towards the right direction or not so that is a common problem and students face that type of problem very much but you see the in generally the convenient way is to collaborate with different 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 uh, domain expert that is another ideal way because, for example, if you are if you are tying up with hospitals, if you are taking healthcare data, you are analyzing it. If you are getting certain interpretation, you can go to doctors. You can you can explain them that I have used that part. My result is given this type of the outcomes. So, is it justifying what is actually happening in the in the in the biological phenomena? So that type of things you can do. Because you see, in the healthcare domain, for example. Doctors are the ultimate decision makers. Okay, our tools, method are just a catalyst. Okay, and for example, if you are doing, a, if you are exploring it for the, any other domain, for example, uh, several chemical compound detection purpose. Nowadays, AI is, is being explored a lot in chemistry. People used for the lot of compound detection purpose and other stuffs. Okay, so in those cases, the same thing will happen. You can do, deploy your model on the data. You can analyze it, but when in the detections, whether it is doing right or not. So that type of difference can be made through a, from a chemist. It is not possible for you, but definitely at least some sort of idea that whenever you are applying your knowledge on a certain domain, if you are not from that domain, it is good to have some sort of the idea that how it is happening, what is what is actually the physical phenomena is going on there. Just some sort of idea on the data, because you have to understand the data very very well. 
that whether it is a spectroscopic data, whether it is imaging data, and what type of the tools and techniques are being used to capture the data. That is also very important because you see, this is a very, very important question. Why I'm telling that? Sometimes you have, in, in, for example, you are, do, you are doing the star detection, or if you are using laser in the biological labs, there are highly chances of the presence of the speckle noise, what you call the granular noise in terms of the image processing. White and black dots are there in a very, 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 very uh, micro level. So you have to remove them through median filtering or some other means. You have to remove them. If you can make the data cleaning properly, your algorithm will not give you the proper result. Okay, so that's the reason. If you don't have the domain knowledge, but for example, those who are from the CSIT background, I'm considering that you are from the CSIT background and you are you are applying it from for, for the astrophysics domain or healthcare domain or metallurgy domain or some other domain of the chemistry or something like that. At least try to understand that how the data has been captured. What type of the instruments are being used there? For example, if any laser is being used, definitely there will be granular noises. So you have to remove that granular noises by using certain sort of filtering, like median filtering, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I'm just taking a simple example for your understanding purpose. So how the data is using, what is the data size, what type of interpretation data is giving to you, that type of understanding you require. Okay. And regarding the interpretation purpose, you, you can collaborate with certain domain expert. They can they will help you or guide you that okay that type of result is meaningless or no it is a very significant result that is guiding you to that type of direction so that is that is a good way of, of, of doing that of exploring on certain fields for sure because you, your expertise is deep learning machine learning you are, yes. you, are you are not a not a metallurgist or you are not a kid right yeah So you have to collaborate, but being a data scientist, you have to understand what are the data, what can be the possible noise resources, as the pre-processing, as I always say, pre-processing is a very, very important step. Okay, and you have to do it very, very wisely. Then you will, whatever the model you will apply, that is going to work in an indicator. That's it. Okay, so, so uh, if anyone wants to ask any further questions or wants sir to discuss a few topics of their interest uh, we have time actually sir so if uh, if any of the participants want to do that uh, they are welcome to do so uh, sure, sure, otherwise yeah. uh, if nobody has any uh, issue sir i would like to like uh, while answering my question sir you actually mentioned about one of the topics like that compound detection one uh, how do you actually go about uh, so like i uh, saw one of the conferences where uh, one researcher was actually talking about using machine learning or deep learning uh, using deep learning network to uh, determine what kind of element is present in a compound so how do you go about approaching those problems because uh, building any architecture is uh, okay it depends on you but how do you approach any healthcare or any uh, a problem like comp compound detection how do you approach that problem first so okay so in any yeah. domain if you are going with the deep learning first of all you have to check that whether you have the adequate data set or not or how using or if, if it is if, if you if you are lack of that 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 type of data can you use the transfer learning to get the data in order of 10 to the power of 5 because you see what happens you have to understand the activation function first of all in case of machine learning, what happens? We use a sigma function, tan hyperbolic function. Now you see the concept of the machine learning is analogous to our human brain, the functioning of our human brain. Now, if you see, you can work in a day for, for 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, then what will happen? Your performance is saturated. You will require certain rates, right? If you see the graph of the sigma function or tan hyperbolic function, what do you, what do you observe? It is not performance-wise scalable. In some way, it will saturate. If you look at the graph of the sigma to 10 hyperbolic, it will saturate. So why does it the saturation zone is slice? Whenever you, you cross the data in order of 10 to the power 4, the performance will saturate because of the saturation level of the activation function of the machine learning. But when the deep learning philosophy came up, why does it came up? Because of the industry 4.0 era, we believe the superhuman activity. OK, superhuman means robotic activity. Where you don't, there is no what called saturation, continuous scalable, continuous scalable. So that type of function is a ReLU. ReLU has a ramp-like function, which is continuous scalable. Where 
there is no end of improvement. You can achieve the accuracy even nearby 100%, 200%. So that's the reason nowadays industry, it, it, is, it is a trend that if we have the facilities like GPU, GPU, nowadays we have the virtual GPUs, why should not we, we, why should we compromise for the accuracy level? We should go for the deep learning. Now, the first of all, like I said, that we, I have to check that whether I have the, if we are planning to deploy deep learning, whether we have the educated asset or not, if not, the transfer learning, can we achieve that? Okay. And secondly, what are the data resources? How the data has been captured? That is very, very important to understand the possible noise levels in the data. Okay. Then definitely you, uh, we have to we have to decide that what are the other possible ways to clean, make, clean, cleaning or make cleaning of the data. Then you decide that that what type of applications you are doing. For example, if you want to make a product out of that 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 particular applications, then like the way I showed I told you guys that you can go for one of the good solutions. But actually, you can you take the facilities of the it's computing because you see whenever nowadays the product is being launched in the market you can see there are two ways one is a cloud based platform the cloud analytics based platform other one is the mobile based approach what do we call the edge computing now you see the edge computings are always have some lightweight model okay so in those cases you can you can take the facility of the, those lightweight approaches otherwise if you are doing it for the research paper publications and all you can you can go with the conventional uh, systems as well there is no problem but the way why you are preferring certain model have you made any parallel tally or not that is also very very important that like i have highlighted here that how the the the, the cnn is giving you the optimum result in terms of the com contemporaries like for example ml algorithms like the knn or support vector machine or something like that so that thing you have to highlight okay but let me tell you one thing as, uh, as well that i should mention because you see if you don't have the adequate data set to deploy deep learning, even after applying transfer learning, you are feeling that you are not being able to achieve nearby data in order of 10 to the power 5, you should remember that machine learning tools are very, very elegant tools. Okay. They may not be as much as scalable like deep learning, but they are very, very effective. Okay. For example, when Bapnik developed support vector machine, in 90s, it has done a lot of miracles. I mean, a lot of, lot of computational problems, a lot of... Uh, uh, issues has been solved using is SVM. And even if you are talking about the noisy system, okay, for example, you are doing the noisy system. If you see in your physics, experimental physics lab, like for example, people, those, uh, those who perform the op experiments with optical tweezers, okay, those are the highly noisy system and it's very difficult to get the top level accuracy. So there people go for the Bayesian system, Bayesian model based system. For example, you can use hidden Markov model. Okay, those are the dynamic Bayesian model. So apart from the efficacy of the deep learning you have to respect the efficacy of the machine learning as well there are elegant machine number of the tools uh, machine learning tools are there where we can actually deploy and take the efficacies of the machine learning tools so those are there okay so the main thing is that first of all if somebody wants to excel in the career in the data science domain he or she has to go through linear algebra very well at least matrix understanding of the eigenvalue eigenvectors because you see, uh, apart from MSDFA, those were the conventional uh, uh, picture extraction tool in machine learning uh, arena. If you see support vector machine, uh, singular value decomposition is there. You would have to understand them very, very well. Then obviously, the basics of the probability and statistics. Okay. You have to understand the base theorem. Those things are very, very well. Otherwise, you will not be able to deploy those type of Bayesian models because you have to interpret them. It's not only about the blindly applying those models, but you have to interpret the data. You can take the help of certain domain expert, that is fine. But that domain expert may not have the idea on machine learning or deep learning, what you are doing actually. He will say that what are what type of physical phenomena is actually uh, happening there and whether your parameters are, whatever the outcomes you are getting, that is judging it or not perfectly or not. Okay, so that type of things will be there. So respect data, okay, and, and take the data very, very seriously. How you are collecting data, that is very, very important what type of the possible noises can happen so you that that the reason you require to know what type of the instruments are involved in the data collection okay like i was mentioning using laser will cause the uh, sort of noise okay so that type of things you require to understand reposition step only focus step on the people okay that is very very important then go for the deployment of the mission and or the planning okay as for the requirements and whatever the data size is given.
and that is also important always be make sure that you are not overfitting the job okay Okay, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. It was really an enlightening experience for all of us and we could learn a lot from you and what you have done and we could uh, get inspired by uh, what uh, your works. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, Prashenjit, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Prashenjit, sir, is it uh, enough for uh, yeah. sharing your invaluable time for us and also enlightening us with your commendable speech? Stay safe. Thank you, sir. Stay. Thank you for your kind work. Thank you very much.